Harrow, one of Britain's most famous and most expensive schools, opens its gates to 800 boys for the first day of the new school year. It's so traditional, and it's very, very old, and it's, it's very big and very scary to start off with. In an ever-changing world, the school holds on to values and traditions established over 400 years. The school obviously has a number of traditions and customs which really serve to give the school its particular character or flavour. They, taken together, would be one of those things which makes the school distinctive. I think the stereotypical view of Harrow is basically like people running around like sticks and top hats and going like very posh accents and going, oh, hello, jolly good to see you, oh, John, yeah, it's very nice. And it's really not like that at all. Please sit down. <clears throat> well, I hope everyone's had a very enjoyable summer holiday and we especially uh, welcome this morning the 180 new pupils to the school. Whether your interests or talents lie in art or music or drama or sport or one of the hundred or so other activities on offer, it's part of my expectation that you will try out a variety of these activities in the coming weeks and in so doing discover, I hope, abilities and interests that you may never even have known you had. Although Harrow is full, Boarding has declined elsewhere by one-third in the last 15 years. Now fewer than 1% of the nation's children board. Many of Harrow's new boys are leaving their families for the first time. On his very first day, each boy must audition for a place in the school choir. I'm Mr. Walker, I'm the director of music here, and this is our occasion to meet every new boy in the school. The idea is just to sort of see where your voice has got to, see what instrument you play, make sure everything's right, and send you away happy. It certainly is the case that some boys try not to do it well, but we do our homework in advance and we know who we're looking for. So we're, we're up, up to some of the tricks. Even if they're not good enough for the choir, there's no escape. It's a Harrow tradition that every new boy must sing a solo in front of the rest of his boarding house. It'll be an interesting solo when you sing Men of Harlow from the house, won't you? I look forward to being there. OK, thank you very much. His, his voice is breaking and he can't really control it at the moment. So whatever happens in the future at the moment, he couldn't sing in a choir at all. Like the new boys, 25-year-old Keith Metcalf has just started at Harrow. One of his first jobs is to take his tutor group to the classroom to give them their timetables. Keith is also an assistant housemaster at Drury's, one of the 11 boarding houses. So this is Churchill Schools, where all the geography department is downstairs. Obviously you can see there's uh, the, the house system at Harrow is a sort of root of, of most things. The house is important to the boy. It's where he, obviously, where he lives and where he, where he does uh, much of his work. And it's where, of course, he will find um, most of his, or a great number of his friends, certainly when he's first here, uh, will be based uh, on his house. And it is, a, a, in a sense, a sort of school community within, within the larger school. Now, what we're going to be doing today is going through the role, my role, as your tutor and uh, your role as my tutee. Then we're going to go through the timetable. You're just going to get your own separate timetable because you're not all in the same forms. We'll make sure you're happy with what forms you're in. Thursday is Latin, History and Divinity. Friday, Latin and Chemistry. And Saturday, English Technology. I think that our role goes way beyond the, the actual form room because uh, we are a, a, you know, a boarding community. We're here 24 hours of the day during term time, weekends as well, and so one's in constant sort of touch with, with the boys. And um, in that sort of way, it's like a, you know, an enormous great family. 
watching the new boys in their first 24 hours. We build very much on their house identity because they've come away from home, they're insecure and they want to be find security in a small group. So to come to a school like Harrow with almost 800, that's big and vast. So the house and the year group within the house is a smaller unit they can adapt to. Michael, were you in the first or the second? During term time, you are the most influential adult in their lives, and, and that is an awesome responsibility. So you are surrogate parent, and you've therefore got to build up a strong relationship with each boy as an individual. Seem to be some, you know, some very talented boys. It's, it's very encouraging. There's probably not a boy there who isn't a, a sportsman or not interested in playing, which also helps. And that, that, that will also help them settle in because they'll all want to play sport together as a group, and that's quite important in the early days. I mean, they look as if we'll win quite a lot of house competitions this year and in future years, I think, on the basis of watching them for 15 minutes, which is why they're in Drury's, of course. Being from a nice, cosy little family and coming to a place where I'm one of 63, it was quite amazing shock. I don't want to say no one really cares because they all he cares about everyone, but I mean, quite impersonal. Yeah, you. It's quite heavy chat, so we turn it on its side. Okay, now who knows where Custos' office is? David Ellery introduces the new boys to another long-standing Harrow tradition. Some names in gold because when you become head of house, you're... Since the early 19th century, each house has recorded the name of every boy on its boards. I've got the board there. Okay. You can tell a great deal about a boy by the state of his room, what his interests are by what's on, on the walls, how tidy his room is, it tells a lot about the character. But we accept that it's their home and, and we want them to make them feel as comfortable as possible. Oh, how's it going? Um, good. First rule when an adult walks in the room? And that's fine and mild. Okay, we're not planning on putting all these women on the walls, are we? No, uh, the walls are solid. Right. What were the rules? I thought the same, the, it's blue tacks not allowed on. No, and, and certainly not drawing pins. Wasn't it? Even worse than blue tacks. Alright. So what you really need to do is to get a drape and to be able to stick those on and then hang them up. But I think we're going to have to decide how many women and in what state of clothing. And like right. So you're fairly patriotic. And is this all you've got at the moment in uh, terms of posters? Yeah. I left one back at home. This one? What, and what was it? What's the it poster? Just, uh, There's another, another woman, yeah. was yeah. Does, mum, does mum allow you to have all these up at home? Well, she she brought one up. Oh, did she? Yeah. Oh, right. I went in the kitchen about 10 o'clock. Right. Got two. Okay, well, I think put one or two more up. You can always blue tack one or two onto there. Yeah. You can lie in bed and look at them. So you've got something nice to look at when you wake up in the morning. Now, John, I have some rather good news for you. You're in the oh. plain song choir. Oh, you no. and Freddie. What do you mean, oh, no? <laughs> it's extremely good news. So you've got your first rehearsal tomorrow morning. Yeah. All right? Yes, sir. Good. You don't look delighted by the news. <laughs> no, way. Really. Then I think your voice is quite good. Yeah. All right, OK. I'll yeah. see you later on, then. Yeah. Yeah. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Are we watching out? Um... Oh, in my first school, I was like a worst singer in the school. Can't believe I got in. I think Mr. Ellery was just trying to make conversation. Because I've seen some worse ones downstairs. I growl and moan and groan and tell boys off more than punishing. But I do believe that, that in a disciplinary sense, as a housemaster, you need firm guidelines for the boys to deal with, cope with, which gives them a security as they grow up, particularly through adolescence. But you've got to know when to turn a blind eye and what is important and what isn't important. Harrow School grounds are spread over 400 acres. 
New boys are given two weeks grace to find their way around. After that, they'll be disciplined if they're late for lessons. Hey, excuse me. Um, yeah. Do you know where the English clock five is? Yeah, okay, the quickest way is around that corner, yeah. down the road until you get to the turning off to the left, it's just in front of Elfield, you know right. Right? And then across, across that road, in yeah. front of Elfield, turn left again, and it's just up. And there's a sign saying cops and GT schools. Is it quite okay. near where the job is? Yeah, it's just opposite the job Okay? Okay, thanks a lot. The new boys with the best voices have been selected for the treble section of the choir and must now attend their first lunchtime rehearsal. Okay, that's far enough. Now, I see some people starting to look a bit uncomfortable. Not everyone will be able to get that high, don't worry if you can't. Very well done. There are one or two gentlemen at the back here who are standing behind other people, which is not a situation that I'm particularly happy with. And I'd like you standing somewhere where you're not standing behind somebody else. Because you strike me as the sort of person that's going to grin at the back and not do what he's supposed to. Hey. Oh, Responsible for the carving of names is Ralph Thompson, known to the school as Custos. Robson. And you're happy with that? Oh, that's great. I'm so pleased that you're... Not many people see their own name carved. No, they don't. This uh, is there for history. So you're now in a row here, so that'll be there, and nobody can change that. Yeah. And then you can look back in history and say, there I am, Kai, are you happy with that? Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Really? Sorry, very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Brilliant. I'm so happy that you're happy. Yeah. If they try and uh, tuck it in, you know, but there you are, you can say, You've seen your name card. Now, normally things will be a little more relaxed than this, but this afternoon we have to learn a short piece of music ready for the Sunday morning service. Don't talk, please, while I'm talking. And it sounds like this. Three times in my little way, and again I say three times. Lots of families of the names been carved and some for generations. Yeah, like my, my family have always come here. There was, there was me and my two brothers, and before them was my dad and his brothers, and there was my granddad and my great granddad. And you were the first. The first of that family. Lovely. Maybe your great 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 grandchild can say the same thing. Yeah, you never know, do you? No. And there you are. If you looked at the house boards, you will see the same names repeating themselves. And so there are um, some families where in a space of uh, what, about 150 years, there have been over 60 members of the same family. So you can't get you know, a greater sense of continuity than that. I think that it puts quite a lot of pressure on me because all my family have been here, and if I don't they really do much good here, then I might let my family down. In 1615, Harrow School consisted of just one room. It's still preserved today, and known as the fourth form room. This is where Carvin started, and somewhere in this room is your great great grandfather. Yeah, somewhere here. Oh. We should try and find him, shall we? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. See what you can find. And what other ones you can find? Yeah. Because in here is Lord Byron, Sheridan, Trollope, uh, Churchill. Churchill. Yeah, Churchill's in there, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Seven Prime Ministers of England in here. Uh, is it the boys who carve it below? Yes, the boys used to carve all their names below with the help of the local carpenter. Started in 1620, actually, the first boy carved his name with a pen knife. And then it went from there. So let's have a look and see if we can find your great great grandfather. Okay. Right. He was a ship owner, and there he is as a bone. And that's your, that's your, oh God, yeah. I didn't even know he existed. Ah, oh, well, there you are. And actually, he's up there. One 
one or two people shouting, um, one or two people singing the wrong octave, but basically a very good sound, um, much better than I'd thought. Um, obviously not all of them want to be here, some clearly really don't want to be here, and uh, if they continue really not wanting to be here for much longer, then I might let them uh, stop out, but I might make them stay, depending on how nasty I'm feeling. This is the famous bird. Uh. Uh, what you had to do, you had to bend over here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You bend over here, put your hand here, and you reverse it at 9 o'clock in the morning. Hello, that's uh, calling you boys. Every day, Drury's new boys meet with housemaster David Ellery. Inter-house rivalry is strong, and it will soon be the first opportunity for the Drury's new boys to win honours for their house. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we've lost half of you already. Ah, James. So who's got lost today? Oh, yeah. 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 Physics, was it? Oh, you stopped the chemistry. I went to economics. Going to economics, yeah. Well, that's quite good for A level. So on Sunday at 2:30, we are going to be playing Westacre. That's the first soccer match. Robson! Robson in! James Robson's parents have come to cheer him on as he wears his house colours for the first time. It's lovely to see him. It really is. When I saw him, I couldn't stop kissing him, which was very nice. And he didn't sort of fight me off, so it was nice. We find that how well a boy settles in or not almost reflects his character more than whether he's boarded before or not. Some love it. And James may find that he loves boarding because suddenly he's got a whole range of instant brothers who he can go and play football with, throw a rugby ball around, sit and chat with. And so he's moving from an environment where he's got younger brothers and sisters, and he's suddenly got boys of the same age around all the time. Well done, Clyde. That's good for the team. Yeah, yeah. Good for the future. Yeah, yeah. Pass the ball around nicely. Some good goals. Did you score? Yes, No. Actually, you might, I regret to say, be a defender. So, I'll leave you with mum, dad and family, and we'll see you at quarter to five. Key. So that's the private side, yeah. All right? OK, see you later. Bye. Thank you, Charlie, It's when they've been here, and then they go, you realise how much you miss them. After they'd gone, I sort of... I felt like more homesick than I had in the whole week. It's the end of the week and the first Sunday service of the new term. The school is dressed up for the occasion. So as we embark on another school year together, a new commitment, indeed a command, to listen to each other. You know, our rich diversity would be a worthy intention. For the new intake, the coming weeks will be critical if they are to settle into the Harrow way of life.